Welcome to a meeting of the Town of Barnstable Comprehensive Financial Advisory Committee Operating Budget Subcommittee. Today is Wednesday, April 17th, 2024. This meeting is being recorded by the Town of Barnstable and will be broadcast on Channel 8 after the meeting has concluded. If anyone is planning to record this meeting through audio or video or transmit this meeting, please identify yourself to the chair at this time. All right, the agenda for the meeting is available on the town website. Uh, so uh, I will also uh, call the roll. Uh, Lillian? Here. Chris? Here. Jackie? Here. Tom? Present. And Chuck is here. So we are uh, all in attendance. Um, is there any public comment before we uh, turn it over to the Department of Public Works? Okay, not hearing any. Um, we'll turn it over to Dan and uh, we'll walk through the uh, Public Works FY25 General Fund Operating Budget. Thank you, good evening um, for having me, representing Public Works. And uh, as far as the General Fund Operating Budget for proposed for fiscal year 25 goes, uh, we are, uh, at the bottom line, requesting a $242,455 increase, which represents 2.18% over the fiscal year 24 budget. Uh, the items that are um, included in the increase, uh, there are some increases, some decreases, um, primarily related to personnel on the uh, on the personnel side, prim primary, primarily related to uh, increases that are contractual relative to steps and uh, reclassifications, et cetera. Um, there's a fiscal year 25 cost of living adjustment and contractually an increase in longevity compensation relative to the um, collective bargaining agreement with the Barnstable Municipal, Municipal Employees Association Department mm -hmm. Head Unit. We are uh, now, uh, we'll be paying overtime uh, for time uh, that exceeds uh, 40 hours a week with approval. We've added 40,000 for that. And we have removed uh, a safety incentive, um, which is part of the longevity of 21,200. And then finally, on the personnel side, because we have uh, over the years, at least recently, uh, it's been very difficult to hire some people, particularly engineers, um, folks in the summer, and we've had excessive salary savings. And so uh, Mark and his team felt that uh, we could reduce our overall personnel budget by $300,000 uh, because our salary savings actually probably double that uh, most years uh, at this time of year. And that if we do in fact see uh, a change in our ability to hire, uh, that we will seek um, additional funds through a, a special appropriation uh, for that. That's for personnel. As far as the operating expenses, um, these are, uh, Increases in our utilities, electricity, 130,000, and the sewer and water, 7,000. Portables, these are uh, portable facilities that we use at the beaches for the summer, and we include those every year. Um, and operating capital remains as it has been in previous years, 500,000 for vehicle. Uh, we have about 150 pieces of equipment, vehicles and equipment under this category, and uh, they wear out. We need to replace them. And uh, based on our ability to be creative over the last several years, uh, we've been able to keep this budget at 500,000 despite increases uh, in the cost of vehicles and um, inflation over the years, primarily as a result of uh, creatively utilizing used vehicles where appropriate, um, buying uh, on the used market. We're oftentimes able to save 
50 or 60 percent off the cost of new with vehicles that have very low miles and that have very um, little use. So that's been a major game changer for us in keeping this budget item at 500,000. Uh, mechanical and building, again, these are annual operating capital expenses. Uh, mechanical and building, 150,000. And that covers basically equipment that has to be replaced, um, electrical equipment, HVAC equipment, things for the elevators. These are things that are difficult to predict uh, every year. And this provides funding for us to buy um, pieces of equipment that are rather expensive cooling towers for HVAC or compressors, or condensers, things like that. Um, and so those are the changes um, that we have uh, been um, granted basically based on our request or at least proposed that would be proposed to the council for fiscal year 25. That's for the operating budget. Um, I don't know if you wanna stop there before I move into the um enterprise uh, enterprise funds Dan can I can I ask um back on the, the hiring um is it a you know uh qualified uh, uh hiring pool issue or a competitive comp issue or um what what's behind some of the the hiring challenges if you could just remind us Primarily, it's uh, in benefits. Um, we we don't necessarily compete with the market. Um, and we're not only competing with other towns. These are jobs that are in private sector as well. And we found that um, the pay uh, exceeds what the town pays um, in benefits. Now, we've we've attempted to address that this year, going to the 70-30 with the health healthcare uh, benefits and that that should help but we'll see and then the other item is uh, housing costs on Cape Cod are extremely high I'm sure you know all about it um, and it's very difficult to uh, attract people to move here uh, and we've had actually many people uh, that have accepted jobs once they find out about the housing market actually turn them down and, and don't come and join us um, a lot of our employees now more and more are coming from over the bridge where the cost of housing is less expensive, uh, but people you know, ne aren't necessarily willing to do that commute for a rate of pay that they can get on the other side. So these are a couple of the challenges. Probably the biggest challenge we have uh, relative to personnel resources is getting uh, you know, good qualified applicants. Um, and we've seen it. You know, it's up and down for the past couple of years since COVID, as I'm sure you all know, with the unemployment rate so low, it's just a challenging environment, um, particularly when we're not competitive with our salaries. Now, I've worked with Mark and Bill Cole and Human Resources to to upgrades where I can do it, to change job descriptions, to boost up those salary levels. And in some cases, it works out. And in other cases, it's just not enough. Uh, we have a difficult time attracting seasonal employees, and we rely on a lot of seasonal employees in the summer for our grounds maintenance. And um, we just can't compete with the private landscapers. And, and the problem there is we can't just raise the salary of the summer, the uh, seasonal employees, because uh, then we're bumping up against the salaries of permanent full time employees, and we can't very well pay seasonal employees more than the full-time employees. And so that's that's kind of a barrier uh, as well. So we've really been understaffed, particularly during the summer with our uh, grounds uh, crews for the last few years. And, and it shows our product, to be perfectly frank, has not been as good as it has been in the past because we don't have the employees uh, to do the work. Uh, Dan, Thank I, you. Have a, I have a follow up on that. I think last year you were talking about the difficulty of um, hiring professionals like the engineers because we, you were com we were competing with private companies. Has that eased at all? No, oh. no, not really. We still have many openings, particularly mm. in the 
CWMP arena where we're, we're hiring professionals and we need those skills. Uh, we have a variety of openings there that have been out for months and months and months, and we get a spattering of applicants here and there, um, most of which aren't qualified or aren't willing to, uh, you know, come. Hmm. What could we do to um, be more competitive, do you think? Well, um, pay more. <laughs> um it, it's i mean that's a fact it's it, it's a, it's difficult because we have you know we have a classification system that the human resources has developed and um if we start paying more for certain jobs it skews that system so we're always trying to balance right you know, between paying uh the appropriate market for certain skill sets, but not skewing the entire town system. And again, I work closely with Mark and Bill on that, uh, but, you know, but it's a challenge. We do, uh, we'll increase the, the step level that an employee starts at, or we'll add another week's yeah. vacation. There's a few things we can do within the system uh, to boost that up, but um uh, mm. Yeah, I think we need to do, you know, basically uh, a, a salary study at some point. There, one hasn't been done in a long time to to see exactly where we are in the market with all our jobs in town. I think town of Barnstable prides itself on being quality town with quality employees and enable and to be able to keep it that way. I think we need to be competitive and we need to understand what the cost of providing uh, good quality employees is. Thank you. Quite a dilemma. Can I ask the question? It's it's Betty's here. Yeah, um, Dan. Something you mentioned. Something about you were removing the safety incentive. What's what's that? When you first started talking, the safety incentive. So as part of our contract, uh, there was a uh, a payment, an annual payment for uh, employees that. Uh, to be safe and it was something that was negotiated years ago and in this year's negotiations they just folded that into a combined number with the longevity bonus and so there's a net savings mm -hmm. uh, on that line item and if I'm misstating that Mark please feel free to jump in yeah it was Dan's right it was rolled into the longevity compensation but it doesn't mean that we're we are not encouraging our employees to do the jobs in a safe manner um you know we have a safety officer on staff that um provides training oversight um and consults with all departments employees on you know doing their jobs in a safe manner and that's so not is the is the rolled up thing does it contain the safety aspect still yes okay so it's yeah, still we have a safety committee and you know regular safety training that the problem with the incentive was everyone got it and there was no way to not get it really so it's not much of an incentive if you get it regardless of how you're behaving so now everybody gets this new rolled up one well it's a longevity in the past uh, it was it's something that was negotiated in the past, and it's very difficult to claw back um, pay dollars yeah. in a collective bargaining agreement, as I'm sure you know, Betty. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Believe me. Um, and I, I find it, and I kind of want to back up what you what you had said, Dan, about doing a study. Um, I, I think it's it's well overdue, especially that's quite something to hear you talking about 3,000, 300,000 coming out of the salaries. Like, uh, you know, we put up the white flag that we need to do something different. I mean, that's startling. What, you know, what are we not doing? And are we starting to look at, and I, you know, I don't need an answer now. I just think there should be, and I don't know if the CFAC or we need to have an outside help. I mean, we are hire so many uh, consultants to study our planning and, and things like that. Why don't we, spend the time on our DPW, which like you said, is the heart of this community. And you're right, people do notice that things are not uh, as they should be, but you know, maybe it's time to start outsourcing. You know, I, th I know that's a lot of the stuff we started doing in the military when we started getting rid of a lot of our, our specialties 
and a lot of stuff was outsourced. And it just would be interesting, you know, I don't want to take up too much time now, but when you said you, you've given up that 300,000, you know, is there a broad brush of what are you not doing? Um, hmm. No, it's, it's a good question. I, I think our uh, studies of outsourcing in the past, in my experience in studying it is, um, it's more often than not, not successful in the municipal environment. And, and because uh, you lose control for one, uh, unless you have a very rigid uh, oversight program, which takes resources. And then secondly, it generally in the end costs more. Yeah, I mean, we do do it with our Barnesville water system, but uh, um, so. And the only see- reason that, the only reason we do that is because we bought that water system in 2005. And rather than try to build a team internally, uh, because this had to happen very quickly, it was a lot quicker to get the skill set we needed to immediately jump in and take over by hiring a contractor uh, to do that. But that's been successful with that particular uh, yeah. uh, service. And I, I, I'm, I'm not convinced that it's any uh, more expensive or cheaper uh, than, than if we did it in-house. I'm not sure we'd, we'd have tried to do that today but without having the employees, given the, the challenges we're having with hiring qualified uh, right. professionals, which would have to run that system. Yeah. And, and then, you know, again, I don't want to take up the time now, but I do think uh, we need to take a much deeper look into this and get some assistance to you to do you know uh, more studies and to figure out, you know, how what what is the best way to move forward? Because we've talked that we're doing the CWMP in-house and now we're saying we're having trouble hiring the engineers, which are so critical. I mean, without the engineers, you don't get the design you need. So that's it. <clears throat> sorry, I was on mute. <laughs> yep, sorry. I, I guess you can move on now. I think we were going to talk about the enterprise. Before we move on to that, let's see if Chris has any questions, because Chris is, uh, I believe, responsible for the uh, DPW budget. Yeah, I don't have any questions at this time. I think that, you know, sums it up nicely. I'll reiterate, like others have said, a salary study would be a great idea all across the town, I think. But uh, yeah, I, I don't have any questions right now. Thank you. Okay. We can move on to enterprise funds. Okay, thank you. So there are a variety of decision packages. Um, this, and this is how we request changes to our uh, level funding every year and the decision packages for solid waste division, water pollution control division, and the water supply division um, incorporates increases as well as annual operating capital requests that um, we do through the decision package rather than uh, through um, uh, being funded uh, annually and rolled into that level funded budget. Um, all of the requests this year have been uh, recommended for approval by the council and they have been, uh, they will be funded uh, with uh, revenue that generally uh, flows from the operation to cover these things and no reserves are being used to uh, pay for these items. Um, so the, the greatest number are with the solid waste division, and we have requested increases uh, based on, primarily based on use. Um, and the, the more use we get, uh, the higher the cost for disposal is, but also the higher the revenue. And our, we make sure that in our rate studies that our revenue uh, addresses all of our costs to provide the service. So uh, the first item is charm, which is the uh, hard to recycle materials. And that's like refrigerators and tires and electronics and things like that. We're requesting a $40,000 increase. And you may recall if you've uh, been watching the town council meetings or look at the agendas recently, 
that we have done for the past few years, uh, supplemental budget requests, increases for these items uh, at the end of the year. And uh, just based on how the year's going, if we have extensive utilization uh, for a particular uh, item, then uh, and we exceed our proposed budget, we request an increase to make sure we don't exceed that budget. But there's also corresponding revenue uh, so that we're not um, falling behind. Uh, MSW is municipal solid waste disposal fee. That's our cost for disposing of the waste that residents bring, the general trash, uh, which is uh, ultimately uh, taken by a contractor that we have and goes to landfills, various locations, and it changes constantly. So I couldn't even tell you what landfill, but it's generally out of state uh, at this point. And that's a contractual increase for 33,000. That is an escalator on that contract every year. Construction and demolition disposal, 40,000. That's um, generally, <clears throat> as, as it indicates, construction, debris, wood, old furniture, pretty much large items that aren't refrigerators, electronics, mattresses, or metal. That's substantial. That's a that's a sub substantial increase in uh, in revenue on the de demolition materials. In the uh, expense, you mean? No, on the revenue part. What we're what we're collecting from the de uh, the demolition materials. Yes. Yes. The the uh, projected increase is forty percent. I think that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, well, as we collect more C and D material out of the transfer station, yeah, we earn more revenue, but it costs us more yeah. this as well. Dan, can you tell me what the relationship between F MSW and New Bedford is? So New Bedford is yeah. the former contractor oh. that was taking the MSW. They've been bought by Harvey Industries, which is a large okay. you know, conglomerate of waste uh, and recycling and disposal. So that's um, that's who that's who the vendor is for MSW. I see. Okay, thank you. I couldn't figure out. I knew that I knew there were two, but I couldn't figure out the relationship. Sure. <clears throat> thank you. So salary and wages. Oh yeah, sure. Dan, is uh, CMAS gone? By the way, is that no longer an option? Uh, no, they are still in operation, and I imagine that uh, at some point in the future, when this contract uh, terminates or gets near termination, we'll uh, go out and recompete that. And uh, okay. actually, we do use them for our. Uh, town buildings. So we collect the waste from all the town buildings, beaches, and because we don't have a facility that can handle our packer, our trash truck, mm -hmm. that goes over to Yarmouth and then ultimately okay. goes to CMAS uh, to be incinerated and, and we pay um, the rates for that. So it was just a matter of who got the bid as far as the uh, yes. yeah, it was solid waste basic, goes? Basically the, the low bidder at okay. last time. And that was in 2015. When does the current contract expire? Uh, 2025, and there are extensions available, and we'll have to go through an analysis and decide whether we want to um, extend or if it makes sense to re recompete at that point. <laughs> okay. So is that process starting now? I mean, that's next year. How quick do you guys do that? Like the examination you know, and how the bidding process works you know yeah we want to start probably six to nine months in advance of that okay okay uh so salary increases of sixteen thousand. that's primarily uh contract increases uh through our collective bargaining agreements credit card service fee um because we have moved more and more as have the rest of the town to online um uh permits that and we have to pay for that through our you know every dollar we collect there's a percent 
taken by the uh, credit card service fee. And we found that we haven't had enough money because of that increase. And so we're asking for an increase there. Um, recycling material disposal, uh, $5,500, um, just a small increase again. Um, internet access, $4,000 increase. Uh, that, that's a new service um, that uh, provides better internet access and also is facilitating our new um, no sticker system. So we have a, a license plate system, license plate reader that we've installed recently. That So this year when you buy your um, permit, it's not going to be a sticker to put on your window. You will... Uh, just be, you'll pay, be approved, and your license plate will be your permit. And we have a reader that uh, will read the license plate and then notify the gate guard if someone doesn't have or has not purchased a permit. And then we will we speak with them and tell them how to go about that. Or they may be using uh, the facility for the day and we have a fee for daily use and they can do that and we'll be notified to collect collect those funds. Fed increase in natural gas cost, $2,000, pest control, small amount there. And then uh, contract services, there's a variety of things there. We do an annual rate study with an outside vendor um, and we have other miscellaneous vendors. And so we we're seeking an increase there of 2,500. Are there any questions on the solid waste divisions proposed FY25 operating budget. No, I'm really impressed with the level of funding on so many of your expenses. Particularly the fuel. I mean, that, that you've been able to keep it pretty much the same. I don't know, Mark, has that been adjusted yet? No, the county's bid has not come in yet. And so okay. we're still waiting the bid results on fuel, if there is an adjustment either in one direction or the other, okay. uh, it's probably going to take place, it's probably going to impact the budget subsequent to the public hearings because, you know, we've, we're finalizing this budget now, but that bid has not been finalized yet, so we can't incorporate the new number into the budget proposal. Thank you. It okay. should. We're not expecting any significant change based on the current market. It's been pretty consistent over the past 12 months. Okay, thank you. I think Mark, um, correct me if I'm wrong. There was a um, there was a logistical issue with police looking at electric vehicles because they need to be mobile at all times and be able to respond. Um, is it, do I remember that right? And and it, are electric vehicles something that for some of the operation DPW is looking at, or is is that just not practical in in 2024 yet? Well, um, for public safety purposes, I don't think right now it, it's, it has developed to a point where it can be as dependable, more reliable and practical for um, their purposes. But I believe, you know, we have incorporated in, uh, some hybrid vehicles and DPW's operation, and we are incorporating electric vehicles in other areas of our operation. We've recently received several grants to assist us with some acquisition of vehicles, as well as the installation of charging stations. Um, and so we're moving in that direction. Um, the problem with public works, and Dan can speak more to this than I, but you know, many of the, the vehicles and equipment we use in public works end up getting plows attached to them. Yep. Um, and so we can't put an electric vehicle or a plow on an electric vehicle. Yeah, we used to... Um... You know, we had some hybrids and we had vehicles that inspectors would use, but one of the tenants of our uh, vehicle management over the last few years has been, if we're going to buy vehicles, we need to put a plow on it. And if you're going to be plowing with vehicles, the technology is just not to the point where electric works. Uh, we recently competed for um, a grant to have an electric trash truck packer. And they're they're making them, um, but they're double the price. A packer a packer is already three hundred fifty thousand dollars, so they're looking at seven hundred thousand dollars for one vehicle, um, and it just 
doesn't make sense yet. Um, and so we were advised, you know, not to, it, the grant would have covered half of it. So it still wasn't a, a great deal for us, but we're, we're always looking um, and hopefully technology will improve and we'll be able to, uh, to take that on and save some money in the future. Thank you. So to water pollution control, three decision packages. Uh, one of them is the annual plant equipment, similar to what I mentioned with structures and grounds, with things that have to be replaced, large items, big ticket items that break down, <clears throat> that are difficult to budget for annually. So that's $100,000. We have our um, sludge disposal contract that has gone up and we are seeking $30,000 for that. Been a lot of questions about that. There's always a lot of questions about that because it's, it's costly. And we've looked many times at how, if, we, if, if it's possible to change that process, so we have less sludge that has to be hauled away and incinerated, and that's done in Rhode Island, a plant in Rhode Island right now. Um, the county has looked at regionalizing this because there are a number of plants that create sludge. And uh, there really, to date, has been no viable options, um, including, uh, you know, changes to our plant. We've looked at uh, on numerous occasions, including most recently, uh, because we're going to be upgrading the plant, as you saw from the capital, capital program. And uh, just the way we're doing it is the most cost effective at this time. And then finally, Stewart's Creek grinder pump purchases. Uh, every year, uh, at, well, the Stewart's Creek sewer extension was done in 2010, 2011, 2012, and uh, the town included the cost of grinder pumps that we provide, and um, that money was put aside, um, and every year we seek $50,000 of that to buy grinder pumps that we provide to uh, new services. The reason we didn't buy them all at once and store them is you the, the warranty will run out we put them on a shelf and 12 years later we we're asking to provide them that's a pump that's been sitting on the on the uh, a rack for 12 years with no warranty so this is the why why we've chosen to just take this approach um to grinder pumps so that that uh, covers water pollution control can i ask you a question about the you know, how does last week's EPA national re regulation limiting the amount of PFAS affect what we are already doing and will it have and what we will have to do in the future? So because I know we're doing stuff already and I do oh yeah. you know, but the, the new the new regs are so ridiculous that you know the amount, um, the right. amount, the amount per per trillion or whatever it is, is gone down tremendously. The short answer is, yeah, because of what we're already doing, these new regulations won't change anything for the town of Barnstable. Excellent. The the, en the entity, the town of Barnstable, um, we are already treating to below those levels in the new regulation. Now I can't. I can't speak as well for the other water districts in town because they don't have treatment yet and they may need to modify either their proposed treatment or treat additional wells because of these new uh, requirements. But Are as they, far as, uh, and then relative to the water pollution control facility, there are likely to be regulations coming at some point in the future the ones that were just announced were for drinking water, but they may, they're talking about and studying putting uh, limits on wastewater, particularly because our wastewater, ultimately the effluent is deposited on the ground and can reach its way to the, to, to the, the aquifer. So they're looking at regulating what comes out of the plant to make sure we're not putting PFAS back into the ground. Thank you. It's good to know that we're already doing it. Thank you. 
and the water supply division is typically uh, what what we see here for um, annual increases. There's the operations contract increase, which is part of the contract. It's $287,432 this year. And operating capital annual requests, similar for the other, other divisions, having funds available for emergency repairs, large pieces of equipment, pumps, piping, hydrants, things that break, uh, sometimes get hit by cars and, and need to be replaced. Uh, that's 166,000 annual and includes 16,000 for police details that we're required to have when working on uh, certain roads and at certain times. And then we're seeking additional uh, wages to cover the cost of an intern, summer intern to uh, help out uh, with the operation. And that concludes uh, the water supply divisions. I have a question about that. Um, now I know that we have you for the water supply. Your your the CIP is the filtration plant, right? Yeah, and that's and that's like thirty five million dollars. Yes. Will will water supply be able to um, handle the debt service on it? Yes, that's that's been covered uh, as part of the capital program and that's right. been incorporated into our uh, rate study which looks at uh, covering debt service for the entire life of that loan and addresses what kind of annual increases we need to, to cover that and this is more Mark's business than mine so if I've misspoken he can add on yeah, we, we have a we conduct a multiple year rate study that projects out the operating costs, including all new debt service associated with the five year capital improvement plan. Um, and impending, depending upon those operating costs and new debt service coming on the books in the out years uh, impacts you know, with the rate increases that we're looking at for. Uh, the next five years. And so built into that rate projection right now, I believe we have a five to 7% increase annually for the water supply division in order to cover all those costs. Thank you. I, w I wondered about that when I saw the size of the, uh, the project. Good to know. Yeah, we, we try to smooth those increases in over a multiple year period so we don't end up with a spike of a, like a 30% 30, 30 increase yeah. in a year for water rates when the okay. new Thank debt you. service comes on board. Yeah. All right. Is there anything else, Dan, that uh, you want to take us through? Uh, I have nothing additional. Um, unless Mark wants to touch on the, the CWMP operating budget. But, um... Um, yeah, no, no, we, we have the CWMP operating budget just includes, I believe, funding for 19 positions um, within that area, it's it's a subcomponent of the sewer enterprise fund, um, has its own funding sources, which consists of um, the uh, meals and rooms taxes, subsidies from the Cape and Islands Water Protection Fund, a property tax contribution, um, and does not, we, we, we structure it so that it doesn't impact the sewer rates that current users are being charged. We want that program to be financed through its own funding sources so that current users aren't paying for the expansion of the public sewer system. Right. Um, and so that budget has, um, you know, again, I think 19 full-time um, positions budgeted in there. As Dan mentioned earlier this evening, several of those are vacant currently and we're trying to fill them. And we do have, it looks like we do have um, some new loans coming on the books next year, which are factored into that budget as well. And so we've made provision for that. Will we continue to have the $4.2 million transfers from the Capital Trust Fund every 
every yeah. year? Okay. Yes. That, and our intention is that will grow to a total of 5.75 million because um, we're increasing that by 750,000 a year. Right. right. Five year period. Thank you. That's the property tax contribution. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> Before we wrap, um, I'll just put Chris on the spot again and just make sure, Chris, you have what you need uh, uh, as the lead on this particular group for the uh, operating budget subcommittee report. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm good. If not, I'll reach out personally if I need anything else. Okay. Yeah, and I have everything I need for the um, enterprise funds. We're good. All right. Thank Dan, you. Thank you. Thank You're you welcome. very much. Any questions? Right, feel free to reach out, and we'll try to get you answers. Thank Appreciate you, Dan. It. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Um, uh, correspondence from committee members. Um, I have one thing I just wanted to talk about, but anybody else uh, with anything that they'd like to raise? No. Um, so um, uh, for the um, for the uh, operating budget report, so we have, I think, and, and Mark can correct me, I think we have the schools and the police, are they still both scheduled for Monday? They are on the agenda for Monday night, yes, and I've confirmed yeah. their attendance. All right, excellent. So. Um, so we have that Monday and the following Monday, uh, the plan was to, for the operating budget subcommittee to review the first draft. Um, so I will put the draft together. Uh, I think Lillian's been working on her section. I've been working on mine. Um, I think Jackie may have dropped off. Uh, so I'll communicate with her offline, um, but it would be helpful um, to have Obviously, schools and uh, police, um, you know, we won't speak to them until Monday. Um, I'll just say uh, as much in advance of 429 as humanly possible uh, to get first drafts, just so I can coordinate everything and put it together. Um, so we have something to look at that looks semi-coherent for, uh, for the 29th. Um, the other thing that... Uh, I just wanted to mention, and then I'm, I'm done with this, is um, given I think our report is due on May 13, um, which I think is a CFAC meeting night, um, I will send out a couple of dates as just uh, tentative holds for the subcommittee after the April 29 meeting, just in case we need to meet again. Um, if we don't, we won't keep them. Um, but I'd feel better if we at least had them on calendars so that if we need them, they're there. And if we do need a mark, I'll make sure that um, I give you plenty of time to post so that we don't have a problem with public notice laws. Um, yeah, so that was my, uh, that, that's just what I wanted to raise while we had the, the subcommittee here. Um, uh, let me see, agenda, communications from staff. Do we have any or we're good? Okay, I'm looking at staff no. and getting a no, so. All set, thank you. Any other matters that uh, we didn't anticipate? All right, so uh, thank you. can I get a motion to uh, adjourn the meeting? So moved. Seconded. Seconded, Seconded. excellent. Uh, I'll, I'll call the roll to adjourn, Lillian? Yes. Chris? Yes. Tom? Aye. And Chuck is yes. So we are good to adjourn. Thank you, everybody, for uh, for being here tonight. This was awesome. And thank you, Craig and thank Betty, you. for joining. Amen. You're welcome. Thank good night. You Thanks again. Have a good night. Thanks, Bye. <clears throat>